I don't know about you, but after I watched Hold the Dark on Netflix, I really needed to process it. And I needed to process it out loud because there was so much going on within it. And yet, as it ended, I found myself scratching my head and going, well, what did I just watch? What was it? What did it? Did that make any sense? And so really, I, I think it does. And I think the director has given us little clues throughout the story to really bring it together, even though at the end, he doesn't tell us outright what happened or exactly how these things are. And so here's my interpretation of Hold the Dark and what I, what I gleaned from it. And as I discussed it, and as I even wrote some stuff, just the thoughts that came to my mind. Now, this is totally going to talk about spoilers. So I've done a review that is non-spoiler. So if you want to watch that, totally go ahead. You can turn this off and just skip right, you know, keep going along your day. But through this, I'd love to, after we do this, after I tell you my thoughts, I would love to know your thoughts and your theories in the comments below. So just, you know, listen to mine, write yours along with it, and let's have a discussion, okay? So here, just to start off, to really just set the tone of the whole thing, is I believe that Alexander Sarsgaard's character and Riley Keough's character, the Sloanes, they're not married. They're not husband and wife. They are brother and sister. Now, did you, did you get that sense? Now, this is why I say this, and there's, there's a lot of things that go through it. Number one, uh, her name is Medora Sloan. Riley Keough's name, Riley. No, no, <laughs> Medora. And then you have Vernon. Okay, so Medora, when she's talking with Jeffrey Wright's character when he first comes, he says, so when did you meet him? I never met him. I've known him all of my life. I don't have a memory without him. And so there's clue number one that, okay, and we say that, I mean, you know, if you've been in a relationship for a really long time, you say things like that. Oh, I don't even remember a time without you. I don't have a memory without you. We have all of these shared things, which, so that kind of skimmed over at the beginning when I heard that. I, I mean, it, yeah, it didn't really stand out to me as like, ooh, I need to pay attention to that. At the end, after Jeffrey Wright has been attacked and is now in the, well, he's not even in the hospital yet. He's being taken care of by the, um, by, by the Native American or the, the, the tribe. I don't know exactly who they are. Um, they're Alaska Native people. There is a white woman with white hair in there. And when I saw her first, I was like, wow, that looks like Riley Keough a lot. Like that Medora is just older. And no, that's their mom. And she's picking up the boots that Medora loaned to Jeffrey Wright at the beginning of the film. She takes them, she holds them, she looks at him, and then she goes on her way. So now, okay, so the boy who has gone missing and eventually turns up dead, he's their son, which, okay, we're gonna, that's weird and that's just gross. But why kill your son? Well, Jeffrey Rush talks about when he, uh, when he interacts with James Badge Dale, uh, who's the sheriff, he talks about how it's called savaging. And that sometimes in extreme moments of duress, stress, or need, a pack will eat some of its own. Sometimes it's out of sickness, sometimes it's just out of need. And I think really what it is, is that Medora missed Vernon so much, and he's away at war. So the only way to get him back is if his child dies. And so, well... There you go. So she kills the child in an extreme sense of need and duress and stress to get her brother, her lover, her second part of her home with her. So, okay, so if the, the son dies, great, so then Vernon comes home. But why call in Jeffrey Wright? Well, he's already killed a wolf. He wrote a book about it. So she believes, and now this is my interpretation, she believes that if she can get Jeffrey Wright to kill another wolf, because remember also there's two other kids who have gone missing and or been killed by wolves in this community, that if he can kill the wolf, then all suspicion ends. Then it's done, it's nicely wrapped up. The local police will just go, oh, okay, yep, the, the boy got taken away by the wolves, here comes this dude, he killed a wolf, and boom, here's the dead wolf, we're all good to go. Now Vernon comes home, he can still be sad, they can grieve together over the loss of their child, but they're now together again. You see then also that when Vernon is hunting Medora, what you really think he's doing, he's not. He's going to get his pack. And it becomes more and more evident the more people he kills 
who are in his way. And throughout the movie, as it plays out, you really do think, well, no, he's just hell-bent on getting her, and he's going to take care of her, and he's just so mad and hurt. And I believe he is. But it's really, at the end, when you see them in the hot springs, it's so that he can get to her, so they can become the pack again. And so it's like wolves like wolves, not wolves. They're like wolves at that point. The pack together, it had been separated and he's hunting and he's fighting his way to get to her to make sure now she is safe. Now he is still angry because you watch him and he squeezes her neck and then he stops. And she also had mentioned at the beginning, Medora did, that the hot springs are a good place to wash clean. And so I think that that is a a, just a visual representation and a symbol symbolizing the forgiveness, the, okay, we were making it right here because they had both shared a time at these hot springs. She never wanted to leave them. And so you have just them together becoming clean and sloughing off the, the guilt or the dirt or the weight or whatever of the sun being killed. Now, I don't totally agree, agree with that, but that's how I saw it, and that's how, how I read it. As Vernon is going to hunt his wife, or his sister, he's going to hunt Medora, he comes across the Indian hunter, which I didn't totally understand that name because the guy was white, and so I don't know, did he hunt people, or did they just, is that what they called him? It doesn't really matter, but that just, that name stood out to me as a little odd. But he then gives Vernon, um, well, he says that he gave Medora wolf oil and that he had given his father, the hunter had given Vernon's father wolf oil when Vernon was really young to help get the wolf out of him, to help settle him down because he just wasn't right. And then Vernon sees the masks and he even the wolf masks that he's wearing. And the, the hunter says that Medora left her mask, but you can take one. And so he puts one on and he's like, sometimes you just need to let the wolf out, right? Well, yeah, he does. And it's crazy that at how he becomes, how he transforms, Vernon does, into the character of a wolf when he puts that mask on. And how it changes when Medora takes it off of him in the Hoff Springs, where he softens at that moment. Because as he's choking her, he has the mask on. And he is angry and he is a wolf and he is killing and then she takes it off and he softens. And so it's weird how he becomes that persona of a wolf, of this hunter. Now I do have a few unanswered things within the film. Like, were they really wolves? I mean, you have the the townsfeet people, or at least the, 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 what is it, just the community witch, I guess is what they call her, how they categorize her. She says that Medora has evil in her, that she sheds her skin, that she has wolf's um, blood in her. And so you, it kind of makes me think just a little bit of, are they really wolves? Do they transform? There's none, none of that given in the film. Um, but you also see at one point, well, at two points really, where Jeffrey Rush is in, not Jeffrey Rush, his name is Jeffrey Wright, playing the character of Russell Core. He is in a vulnerable spot and wolves are there. The pack is there and they're covered in blood and they can attack him. And they, they have the upper hand, they have the ability to do it, they have the time to do it, all of these things, and yet they just stop and they look at him. And then they choose not to attack. And so it makes me wonder sometimes, is are they really wolves? Is that Are they part of a pack that you don't know? Because you figure these are like the three white people and of Nordic, really. I mean, they're blonde and they're just, they're tall and they don't look like any of the other community there and so they are outsiders who are now living there so maybe they are wolves because the wolves are white also hmm, i don't know something to think about that's one of the things that is not answered for me that i don't totally know and that i wonder about and but it doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the film the second question i have is why did they feel the need to take the boy's body with them the, they i understand the burying of it and then the putting the blood on there which i at one point I thought, whoa, is he gonna like raise from the dead? Are they gonna bring him back? Is this gonna take some weird supernatural twist to it? I don't know, and it didn't. And so you just see them at the end as they're walking away, dragging the um, the coffin of their dead son. And I, I don't know why. Maybe it was just so that they could bury him together or in another spot, totally unanswered, I don't know. Now, these are all my thoughts on the film. I'm sure I have more of a Hold the Dark and 
you know, but I would love to hear your thoughts and your theories in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm totally off? Uh, did I miss a lot of things? I, I, I'm sure I did. I would love to know. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about this because I, I love it when films do this, where they spark a conversation, where they, they leave it kind of open. Now, sometimes I do like where things are totally answered and I don't have to try and interpret it because I really want to know what the director was, was saying. But in this, I believe that he has given us enough and then he's saying, okay, here's my puzzle. Figure it out. So let me know what you think. Uh, I, I, you know, again, in the comments, please let me know. If you enjoyed this, this discussion, this talk, please give it a like. If you've never subscribed, please consider doing so. You can also tap that, uh, that notification bell icon and that'll let you know anytime I upload new uh, reviews. So thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.